The month is over, uh, there's a new FIFA break on the horizon, well, it's already here. <laughs> so it's time for uh, evaluating and assessing the performance of our players in the last month. We did it last month with uh, some uh, agreements and disagreements yeah. with you Galacticos. Let's see what you think of our opinion this time. Yeah, the field of analysis is seven games, four from La Liga, two in the Champions League, the double header against Legia, and the Copa, and del, the Rey. Copa del Rey at Cultural Leonesa. So we are going to with the goalkeepers and the defenders today. Yep. And Let's go with it. Let's go. Num number one, Kiko. Kiko will not be, uh, let's say, will not be analyzed because he only played in the Copa, and you know, it's it's uh, one thing that we agree on. It's not fair to judge anybody by that game. So Absolutely. Kiko did well, as he always does, but that's the only minutes he's seen, so no points for Kiko. Keylor, Keylor finally back in the dynamic, gets a five. And uh, yeah. don't go crazy, we love Keylor, and uh, he's doing well, but he's shown some things that yeah, we have to, to look back to the first month of competition and we we, talk, we said that his uh, major mistake at Dortmund mm. was, a, was a consequence of his inactivity, yeah. but he, now he has been playing and he has a, a major mistake again at Legia. But he has had a very good uh, save. No, it was a major mistake, but he, could, he should have saved it. Yeah. He should have saved the it. The kind yeah. of shot uh, one of the top players, in, uh, top goalkeepers in the world should save. Yes, and Kiko, Kiko, uh, Kaylor is one of them. Yes. And Kiko too, by the way. No, but yeah, we're giving Kaylor a five, again, in the, in the hopes that when we give Kaylor a seven or an eight, is because you know he's been the Kaylor we saw last yeah, year. Yeah, and he, he has been able to, to save a couple of one-on-one. On one, yeah. one uh, crucial against Athletic de Bilbao in the final minutes. Uh, the play that leads uh, Baran's uh, mistake, we will talk about that later. And at Alaves, uh, in, early in the second half, the After a Marcelo mistake, yeah. uh, one on one again, the saving local, it. The local team has a real good chance <laughs> to be back in, in the football again, and Kaylor very, very, very quickly avoid that uh, situation. So, Kaylor, five. Let's go with Nacho. Nacho gets a 6.5. Again, uh, we've seen a lot of Nacho due to the bad luck of injuries. Which it's kind of hidden good luck for him because he has seen more minutes. And again, Nacho is a very solid player. He will not shine and be the best but he's always there and he rarely makes mistakes. Yeah, he do not have the, the physical ability of, of any of the other center backs, like Ramos, like Baran. True. He's uh, not that high. He's, uh, he has not the ball skill Sergio Ramos has, but he is consistent and he has not major mistakes. And when it well, comes I haven't seen Sergio Ramos score a bicycle kick like, like Nacho, the Nachazo <laughs> in the Copa del Rey. And I think that Nacho is, is very reliable. He's yes. very reliable and he has to step up as the leader of this defense right now. And I think that he deserves a 6.5. 6.5? Let's go with uh, Baran. Baran gets a 5, 5.0. 5. 5. Uh, because again, I think in the same line that we were expecting more from Baran, and a good Baran has to be a Baran a lot better than what we're seeing right now. Yeah, absolutely. With Baran is the opposite uh, case of Nacho. You can see a, a clearance of, of Baran uh, beating in, in, in open field of Bamellan. Yeah. But then you can watch Baran in very the same play after stealing that ball, making giving us, it away. Yeah, giving it away. I, and I think that that kind of mistakes is the kind of mistakes that uh, put uh, that, that apart him from being a top defender. And, exactly. I, and I think that right now he's struggling. Right now he's not a reliable defender. He has everything. He has the physical abilities. He's he's a, a speedster in the in the position. Yeah, but it I is true. That but with a, with a guy like Baran, for example, if you know that he will play 90 minutes brilliantly, but like in every game there will be one or two mistakes that can cost you the game. Major mistakes. Major mistakes that can cost you the game if his teammates are not you know paying attention to solve it then that's something that a center back should never have. Yeah. Because as a center back, like 10 good things equal one bad thing. Absolutely. So, uh, well, that... Baran gets a, a five point, a five. Uh, let's go with Pepe, Pepe gets a 5.5. .5. Uh, I think we've seen a solid Pepe, but far from the best version yet. Yeah, the, the injuries are killing him. He yes. started uh, late the season because of an injury, and then... Uh, and he, a very intense he, summer. Yeah, he got a relapse. He's a, a player uh, in the middle eight, 30s, sorry, in the middle 30s. So it's more difficult to, to him to get uh, physically yes. in good shape. And I think that he's struggling because of that uh, reasons that are out of his control. Obviously. Yeah, and I think that with Pepe, for example, maybe at his age, he can't give you nine or 10 months at full speed, uh, he will give you four or five. Let's hope that those four or five are from January to May. Yeah, what, what he needs now is his rhythm, is feeling that he's in control of, of his body. And I think that uh, mentally he's, uh, he's a, a stone. Yeah. And I think that I, I really trust him as a defender and as a leader of this unit. Of course. 
Uh, Ramos gets no evaluation because, well, he came back injured from the last break, so we haven't seen Ramos play. Marcelo gets a six. Again, we've seen uh, some good things from Marcelo, but uh, I personally think that I've seen him make a little bit more mistakes than usual. You know, when he controls, when he tries to be more visual and tries to dribble a little bit too much. So, uh, you know, I, I haven't seen the best Marcelo I have seen. So that's why he gets a six. Yeah, I think that, again, if you put uh, the good things of, Marcel, of this Marcelo and the bad things, yes. he's uh, still one of the most dynamic players. Ah, of course. He's, uh, he's a difference always in the final third with his dynamism, with his imagination to make plays. Yeah. And I think that, as you were saying, if he's able to avoid that kind of mistakes, we are going to see the, the great Marcelo. And Marcelo is a player who always has a slow starts on the season true. and grows. Uh, with, with the time goes by. But also the truth is, uh, at the end Marcelo is a left back, so we sometimes we forget. But we have to judge him by his defensive performance as well, which hasn't, I would say, it hasn't been very strong. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as a left back, never forget, Marcelo is a left back, his first duty is to defend. Yeah. So that's why he's getting a six. Coentrao gets a five. We've only seen very, very little from Coentrao, but just the fact that he stepped on the pitch yeah. makes us uh, give him five because you know, he's a player, I think Iñaki and I agree, we, we trust, or, um, yeah, we trust. I, I think, we trust, I uh, think he, he's an underrated player, yeah. he's a great competitor, but he has the problem to stay fit, to stay in safe. He mm -hmm. struggles uh, with, with lessons. Yeah. In, in all, every time in his career, if he's able, right now he's uh, through a process in which he has to feel like he's a football player again. He has been seven months out and I think that it's, it's not a matter of one, two or three games. I think he needs playing time and he's going to, to get better uh, again uh, as the time. And definitely, if this injury dynamic continues, we will see a lot of going yeah, you know, uh, Maybe playing as a striker, who knows? Real uh, Madrid is the land of opportunities. <laughs> I uh, mean, Iñaki will go and sign for Real Madrid. <laughs> Danilo is the last one in the defense, he gets a five. Again, we, we are not seeing Danilo getting to that point where he feels comfortable and confident. I think with Danilo is mostly a mental problem. It's a, yeah. it's, a, it's a confidence thing, a psychological problem yeah. that doesn't allow him to be the good player that he is. With uh, Contrao it's a physical thing. I think that Danilo uh, wasn't in good shape the last season, but okay. I think he is right now. It's not a physical problem now. It's not. I yeah. think that he has to be concentrated the 90 minutes. He, he can't uh, allow himself to, to fly from the game for five minutes because no. he's going to, to make uh, silly penalties like the one he conceded yeah. against Legia. Legia. And you said Danilo was the last, but I think we, we hasn't gone over in Carvajal. <laughs> but I think that the player who is in front of Danilo in the depth chart Deserves an analysis, Dani Carvajal. Carvajal, six <laughs> points for Carvajal. Again, we've seen a good Carvajal, but again, maybe the injuries, uh, and that has not allowed him to be in the rhythm that we expect from Carvajal, because Carvajal in rhythm is probably, for me, the best or the second best right back in the world. Yeah, I, I, I told earlier that Contra is a great competitor, Carvajal is a super competitor too, and I think that he needs rhythm, he needs to be in, on the pitch every every match because it's the way his, his mind process works yeah. and his physical and his body works. And I think that the more games, the more reps he has, the better he's going to be. And I think that because of the injury, because of the five game, uh, five uh, yellow card suspension, he hasn't been able to, to have that consistency, that rhythm. And I think that as soon as, as he's able to play 10 games in a row, we are going to see the Carvajal that is able to go to the final third and is uh, and can, running and can with, lock yeah. down his uh, edge. And the thing with Carvajal is we might never see a 10 point Carvajal, but we will never see an under seven Carvajal. Yeah, that, that's absolutely. one of the good things. Anyway, the thing was that was the defense and the goalkeeper tells what you think. Do you agree with yeah. us with our arguments and our points? Let us know, you know, what are your points, your scores. And of course, don't forget, we'll see you tomorrow. We're going to be analyzing the midfielders. Absolutely. And in two days, the strikers, the BBC. <laughs> so uh, for now, just give us a like and subscribe. Don't forget to share the video and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. -bye.